So the time has come for our first out-of-state road trip in the car hauler RV bus conversion. This is going to be our first time taking this thing way out of state, fully loaded down, and going to spend an event weekend with it. This is kind of make it or break it for us. We've tried to go through this thing as much as we possibly could with the time we had allowed, and now there's nothing left to it but to do it. We need to get everything loaded up in this thing between the car, the electric scooter, all the wheels and tires, way more stuff than we've ever had before. And take this thing on a longer drive than we've ever done before so we are headed up to bowling green kentucky for ls fest it is a huge event we're going to be competing it should be a blast assuming we can make it there i don't have the utmost confidence but fingers crossed we crossed our t's dotted our i's and this thing makes the trip so once everything was loaded up and the bus was completely packed in it was time to get up bright and early at five o'clock in the morning and hit the road on our way up north we need to get there by seven o'clock so we don't have a lot of margin for error here. All right, well, we are on the way. It is now seven something. We had our first breakdown. The power steering started getting stiff, and I was a little concerned that it might be a trip ender. But, you know, first things first, check the fluid, and the fluid level was low. The only annoying thing with the bus is you gotta drop the lift gate down to open up the engine compartment, but then you got good access to everything. So we got in here, we topped her off with power steering fluid. It seems to be good now. So we're gonna close everything back up and uh, hit the road. Hopefully, hopefully we got this out of the way early. All right, situation update. Uh, the power steering got weird again. We're, we probably drove for what, four straight hours? Yeah. Probably about four, four straight hours. We uh, pulled into this Bucky's to fuel up and I noticed it was real weird when we were at low speed and you were using it. So we topped it back off, but we found we have a major leak from one of the power steering lines which they're like 45 feet long because they go from the front to the back so yeah we're at a crossroads we're going to try to repair it and then uh see where we're at all right well we're back in the bus uh we found the hydraulic hose place uh riley about 15 minutes away okay yeah i know riley's that yeah. does it he's pretty confident that's pretty perfect because that at least then we can get a riley stuff yeah. Oh, so we try to tape the hose up. We're gonna try try to get some better supplies. Maybe see if we can replace the whole hose. The problem is it runs from the front all the way to the back, so it's like a probably fifty foot long hose. I wonder if he's if he's uh, willing to like let's say cut it there and if his machine can get in there. Definitely it. can't get in there because I used to crimp them. I okay, worked at O'Reilly's. I don't know. I don't know what the <laughs> no, it's a looks big like. machine. It's, it's a big hydraulic machine. Yeah. I was thinking though, maybe there's something since it's not super high pressure, like a, what they have on hard lines, the compression fittings. Okay. Maybe there's something like that. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to get back on the road and try to yeah. fix this thing. We're, we're gonna, still fighting. We're gonna, yeah, we're still fighting. We're, we're still fighting. fighting. We're going to do a shot. We're, we're going to do our best. cozy we got it <laughs> it is monsoony oh well, just i would say above average rain not full-on monsoon but pretty heavy rain oh it is coming down jeez i'm gonna take a nap okay, now it's monsoon What? what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? I'm definitely not laying down You're with, not lounging with a comforter. <laughs> Looking all comfy. Definitely not doing that. 10 out of 10 for lounging uh, wherever at least. Yeah, I know, right? I got a bad vehicle to be broken down in as long as the generator works.
south and we found uh, Bussy Road. Oh, Bussy Road. So one thing Josue did while he was down there working on the line is he tightened up the steering box mounts. They weren't loose per se, but there was some play and it is significantly better now. There is way less play. Uh, so that's nice, at least. Uh, but we're cruising on home, cruising on home. Disappointing. Tail between the legs. Driving back home. It is, uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, I wish I was more of the adventurous type. Now, like, maybe we could have made it there with about three gallons of uh, <laughs> power steering fluid. It actually uses oil, which is convenient because it's the same oil the engine uses. Oh, boy, right, slow down. Copper. Oh, wrong way. That was faster. We would end up having to use a lot of that. And then on top of that, uh, just like the safety aspect of it, you know, on this kind of part of the drive, it's not that big of a deal. It's pretty much flat and straight. Whereas there is a pretty big mountain range we have to cross to get into Bowling Green. And coming down a mountain and losing power steering, not very safe. Not something I'd like to experience. Even just the back road to get to the highway, when it first started acting up, was a little sketchy when we had to go into some of the turns. So I can't imagine coming down a mountain, trying to keep the speed in check and all that. It's a bummer, we debated it a lot. I took a nap. Uh, <laughs> slept on it, I was comfy. I didn't even know, with the rain and everything, I mean, it was super cozy. But uh, I took a nap, thought about it, and uh, we just decided it wasn't worth the risk because if the line, it seemed to be getting progressively worse throughout the drive. But we did do the patch, hopefully that holds. We used some JB water welds, some sealant tape, uh, hopefully it helps just slow it down but if that line goes completely like we're kind of screwed like we're that's not an easy thing to fix so anyway we'll talk more about it when we get home I'll kind of show you what what we were working with and why it's not something we could have just changed I mean we got to an O'Reilly's that probably could have made us a line assuming they had the right fittings but we tried, we tried. but it was not feasible to change that line so we're gonna keep on trucking Keep on bussing. Speaking of, uh, got to bust this semi real quick. Get bust. I'm here. Uh, boom, get bust. Get bust. Right, he's going slow. I mean, we've got semi quite a few times, so I can't, I can't talk too much crap about busting the semis. it's a good thing we turned around the uh we've been driving for what maybe an hour if that and uh it is completely low again steering super notchy so we're gonna hit this rest area and top it off there's trucks
All right, so there is our power steering fluid reservoir. And we've got to put the oil in a little cup and then pour it in because uh, there's not a lot of room. And the funnel's too long. And we're using a giant jug of two and a half gallon jug of oil. If we had quarts, this would be a little easier. But uh, this is our- I'm fishing at it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I submitted the first time to come up with a, a method, but we've gotten better. All right, we are at a loved. An hour and a half from home. And uh, yeah, we stopped. This is the second time since the last time we filmed stopping. We stopped at a rest area about 45 minutes to an hour into the drive after we filled up. And then this is made it like an hour hour 15 we have an hour and a half home so i'm hoping we can just get home without having to do it again uh that's the goal so i should probably quit jibber jabber and get back on the road but it is like 11 o'clock we should be home around 12 30 assuming all goes well but we're heading into the forest so keep your fingers crossed for us all right well we made it back home with the bus not uh not without the adventure we got in at like probably one in the morning and luckily we did make it back to the house before the power steering leaked out again it literally as i was moving the bus over here is when it uh it uh started getting real heavy it was pretty much manual steering but we made it home it was definitely a bummer it was not a decision that we took lightly but really once we needed to fill it up within the first hour of being back on the road I knew we had made the right decision to turn around because we hadn't even gotten to the crappy part of the drive yet where we've got to go around Macon. We're about right almost at Macon basically around Macon through Atlanta. You know, if it got low in downtown Atlanta, you know, there's nothing we, we have to stop. We have to fill it. If we're going to burn the pump up, if the pump locks up, then we're in a really bad place. We can't just disconnect the pump and run manual steering because there's no way to seal that off. It's a spline shaft, because it's semi-truck stuff. It's not, you know, just a belt pump where you like, take the belt off or bypass it, you know? So there just wasn't really a good option, and I think it was the right call to turn around as much as it sucked to do. See if you can bring them in there with you and show them, show them, show them the thing. Oh, you can see all the fluid on the ground there. Oh God, it's gonna be a little tough. Well, Sway so did the majority of work in here, so I'll let him show you. What, what the situation is. Oh man, it's a real tight squeeze. Yeah. It's like a one way entrance. Is, I don't even know if you can see it. Yeah, I, can, I couldn't get under there enough to see the line. It's back there, you can almost see it. So yeah, that's what we were working with. Uh, that line is very tricky to get to. And it is one piece all the way back to the back of the bus. Now, one thing I did think about this morning, after thinking on this some more, what we should have done, what we could have done to potentially continue the trip is the O'Reilly's had hydraulic lines. We should have grabbed a handful of fittings. They would let us, you know, take them out to the bus, unhook the line at the engine, unhook the line at the steering box. If we could find a pair of fittings that worked, have them make us like, a 60, 50, 60 foot long line, you know, long enough to where we could route it pretty much any which way, just disconnect the old line and leave it there and route the new line somewhere else in a way that we could get it from front to back. That would have been the solution in hindsight, but it's easy to think of these things in hindsight. So yeah, that being said, we still got a whole lot of stuff to get out of this, this thing. I mean, I am impressed with how much we really fit in here. You know, we packed this thing to the brim. When we get the car out, we'll have to show you underneath the car in the floor. We ended up fitting a ton of stuff under there. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, oh. Dang, that is a big panel. I saw it from underneath, so I'm like, uh, I think, I think we can see through there. Oh, there's the tape. I think if I take that. That taped piece off? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, try it. It's not like you can't just retape it. At least give them a better shot so we can access the line better. So we can replace them. Oh. Somebody did a pretty good job of it. Right. <laughs> okay. Maybe that for sure. Further in there. Oh, I think it's like right behind this headlight. 
Don't, it's still on the other side, so it's like it's behind. Yeah. I mean, we might as well take it off. We gotta get in there eventually anyway, like you said. You want me to get Philippe? Yeah. You should have them, right? Is he in the bus? No, I put them back. Wow. <laughs> That shit on low or something? Yeah. <laughs> I looked down too. I'm like, what is going on? Sounds like you're taking off a oh, now it's two on inch everything. size bolt. <laughs> All right, you can see this was our leaky line. And this is the repair job. So we used JB water weld and then this sealant tape over top of it. Looks really good. You did a good job for barely being able to get in here. But you can see how wet everything is. That thing was just pouring fluid out. But at least now we know how to get to it. Probably gonna have to replace both of them really. If we're gonna route one and replace one, we might as well do the other. Where is the other one? I mean, you can run them with the heater lines that were already ran since. I mean, I kind of want to make those secure a, a little better secured, and then if we do that, then just run what's, if there's already two, what's two and four? You can see the other line maybe in here, right up there. You see that rusty thing right at the top of the light? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so, not in the best shape. So like I said, it's one of those things, you know, in hindsight, if we had gotten to that point in our inspection of the bus, probably would have wanted to replace those. But then again, the reality of it is probably would have thought we could at least make it a couple more trips, you know, or at least another trip or two. Um, it, again, it's one of those things. We could have gone through everything on the whole bus and still had the one thing we didn't touch fail, you know, but just an oddball thing. Luckily, it wasn't something that kept us from at least getting at home, it didn't stop us, you know, in our tracks. But it is one thing that you absolutely need and that there's no easy way to fix or patch or anything like that. You know, if it was an airline, we could have spliced a union in there, you know, so. I mean, we did learn a lot. An area that I was pleasantly surprised was that it is as nice as I thought it would be to not have a trailer when you're getting into these weird situations. Like, yes, this thing, is massive but it's really not much if any longer than my truck with my trailer and it doesn't articulate so if you got to back out of a spot it's really simple it's just a long car more or less you just back up and turn so that was nice that was definitely one of the really neat things uh was that the no trailer aspect which is kind of the whole point of the all-in-one unit very nifty the, the harsh reality we learned is that you know there's just a lot of stuff on here and we haven't had the chance to put our hands on all of it verify it's all good or verify it's not good and replace it and that's something we're gonna have to do and i think the plan moving forward would be to accept this as a little bit more of a long-term project not so much a turnkey tow rig and really go through it front to back do all the other fun stuff we wanted to do wrapping it you know the upgrades things like that but also go through all the mechanical systems in our defense we did and we didn't want to take the bus we didn't feel ready to take the bus we didn't feel confident that we knew it was sorted we wanted to do more to it before we took it on a long trip we just kind of backed ourselves into a corner because I didn't book a hotel for LS Fest and there were no hotels. When I realized we weren't gonna have enough time, I tried to book a hotel and ran a trailer and I got the trailer sorted, but there were no hotels. Even 45 minutes away, there was like nothing. So the bus was our only option. So we decided, hey, trial by fire, let's uh, let's go. And uh, let's trial more fire. <laughs> what you looking at? Just um, trying to see if I can recognize more now that I've seen more down there. Mm -hmm get more acquainted with them so we can get her fixed up. We still got this whole manual. Back on the road. Yeah, it's very detailed. I was surprised to fi find an actual steering section. Right. You gotta make it to the event so we can get you uh, driving. I know. <laughs> that's the goal. That's, but We've missed three competitions this year. Yeah, it's rough. One with our 2020 Super Duty, one from being sick, and then this one. And it sucks. I hate missing it. I don't know if I've ever missed an event. This many in a row. I but bet. never this many, like, this frequently. We're not giving up, though. You know, and that's just the thing, too, is there is no foolproof option. You know, if I'd never tried a brand new truck, I would think, man, what am I doing messing around with this old bus when I could just go buy a new truck and be problem-free? But we did that, and we had problems. It was the, first, it was the only time we've ever been complete. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time we were ever completely stranded. You know, just stuck. And and it was 
a wake-up call. And the reason I got rid of that truck was because the whole reason I kept it was for the peace of mind. And when all of that was gone, A, it broke down. B, the whole dealership thing, they didn't, they weren't willing to help us at all. They weren't even going to cover it under warranty. I got to see behind the, the mirror, behind the mask of what it's really like when you have a problem with a new truck, not just what I had in my head. And that's why I got rid of it. I didn't get rid of it just because I was like, oh, I'm so mad that this thing broke. My point is, there is no foolproof option. We have figured out. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing that you are guaranteed to not. There's a guy that travels with an RV with his kids and his drift car, and he has a 2020 Duramax truck. Nice truck, 70,000 miles on it. It's left him stranded like three times in the past couple months. They were stuck at E Town for Riverside, the 50K, for like three weeks waiting on the truck to get fixed. So it's like there is, when you're doing this, when you're traveling around the country, it's just stuff happens. Moral of the story. At least the bus, we can work on it, A. B, it is very rudimentary, so we don't have to worry about a bunch of computers and modules failing. That was, a uh, that line, though, that was just... Yeah. Guess, of, of all the things. Of all yeah. the things. If it was, like, a line in the back, like a 10-foot-long oil line, no problem. We would have been on the way. Yeah. We still would have made good time, you know? But the one line that stretches from the front to the back of the bus that we cannot bypass... And there's always at least one thing that could just take you out. Yep. And that was it again. It yeah. hit again. Yeah, so. that sucks. But it's the reality of it. This thing's sweet, dude. I mean, it's really nice to drive. It cruises at 75. Cruise control works great. It rides nice. It drives good. It looks sweet. It sounds cool. It fits all our stuff all in one package. All of that's great. It's just teething issues. Anyway, that being said, uh, we got to get this thing unloaded. here this oil jug was full what do we got less than half left in it oh yeah, like, like a quarter. quarter left in it that's uh how much power steering fluid we went through yeah so we got the, the black stone in there we got chairs table air mattress pit mat more drinks more drinks under this one we've got another air mattress three cases of water we were packed we were deep. ready all right, well, we got all the major stuff unloaded. We got the car out. Definitely just backing it out under its own power is the way. I'm just not a winch guy. We put a winch in my old trailer and we tried to use it every time to, you know, take some wear off the clutch because the clutch we had then was a crazy race clutch. And uh, it's just it's just so time consuming in comparison. So I think in the future, as long as the car can move under its own power, just drive it in and out under its own power. It is way quicker. But we've got the whole opening up the back, dropping the liftgate process down 
nothing to do with science. We had to do it like five or six times on the way home uh, to top it off with power steering fluid. So uh, we're perfect. We got this thing quick. I mean, it just doesn't take much time to unload the car now. So uh, that being said, all that unloaded, it's, it's definitely a terrible feeling to load everything up, prep the car, do all this stuff just to unload it back at home, put it back on the lift having not gotten to use it you know we have just had a little bit of a bad luck string with taking this thing to competitions but it's part of it it's a learning experience we're trying new things you know i've always wanted to set up like this and it comes with its teething issues and we knew that going into it we were not uh ignorant to that fact we knew that we were going to have to do stuff to this thing we knew we were going to have to go through it we just ran out of time and uh we're just going to have to spend a little more time going through it touch you know get in there and touch every every little thing and make sure we know it front to back and give ourselves a better chance for for success it's part of it and and it wasn't ideal to for this kind of event to be its first event it'd be better for it to be a fun event because when it comes to a fun event like let's say a grid life if we're a day late because we spent a day changing a power steering line it's not a big deal we're just missing out on some drive time but when it comes to a competition you know you've got to be there for qualifying you got to get there at a certain time and you know if you miss qualifying you don't get to compete or if we show up with no sleep exhausted you know we're not going to do well because it, it's it's enough work on a race weekend to to just get there at a, with good sleep, you know? So it just, one of those things. It was a bummer to make the call to turn around, but I'm just not the type of person that's gonna dig myself into a deeper hole and then, you know, have to find someone to bail me out. Like, I'd rather just cut my losses, get back home and, and live to fight another day, as they say. And that's what we're doing. We're gonna have to work on it some more and we're gonna have to go through it some more. And we learned some things on the drive and as much as it's frustrating to have to turn around, I still love the thing, because it is sick. It, it's it's just a rad setup. And it, it was really great <laughs> until it wasn't, you know? So, uh, that being said, I'm Jibber jabbering a lot and it was a lot of jibber jabber but sometimes we got to talk these things out together and uh that's what we're doing we're talking it out so that being said we'll go through the bus some more just is what it is going to be a little bit more of a longer term project um, but we've got lots of stuff we want to do between just mechanical stuff and upgrades and it's uh again it's a project i really enjoy you know that's it's it's not just a functional thing purely logic based of getting us to and from the track it's it's something i'm passionate about it's a project i've really enjoyed working on it, it, it i think it's cool i enjoy tow rigs as much as the cars you know so it's it's one of those things it's a really cool setup but it's it definitely comes with its challenges. So anyway, that being said, I said I quit Jibber Jabber. I'm gonna let you guys go. Let me know what you think of our first breakdown <laughs> of the bus. Uh, give us some suggestions on what you would check, what we should check, other stuff we should check while we're going through the mechanicals and uh, any other upgrade suggestions and all, all the good stuff, all the feedback, good and bad. But for now, that is gonna be it. I'm gonna wrap this up. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I sure hope I'll get to see you next time. Goodbye.